YouTube, this is Michael Kaczmierski Dunn, if you guys don't know who I am, and welcome to episode 17 of Blind Piper Reacts. So in the previous episode, I reacted to a barbershop, um, to some barbershop music because I wanted to show I wanted to show how I initially got hooked on Barbershop, right? Um, this is basically just a continuation of that last reaction. I just, I didn't really, I felt like it would be a better choice to upload it in two parts because one big file with all the Barbershop stuff would last forever. So, um, this is basically a sequel to the first part. Um, the first video is in the playlist I titled it Blind Piper Reacts Episodes. So, we heard two male quartets so far. What happened was, I basically posted on the Perfect Pitch Facebook page how I kind of fell in love with hearing Barbershop, right? And then, um, this lady, her name is Jane, she posted a link to, I don't know if it was her sister's quartet or her cousin or somebody related to her, or at least I think so, um, and three other friends doing an arrangement by um, either the other lady's husband or brother or I have no idea how they're related. Um, but a vocal arrangement of George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, which was written in 1924 by uh, Gershwin and recorded by um, Paul Whiteman's orchestra with uh, Gershwin on the piano. Um, this was recorded in 1988, and so don't really, I mean, I wouldn't expect the recording to be very, I mean, the best, because it, it, it is an old VHS tape, I don't know if you guys remember um, physical like videotapes, like v VHS tapes. My sister Lizzie and I kind of grew up with them when we were very, very little. <laughs> um, so, Shelly, I only know their first names. Shelly's on the highest part, I think. Elizabeth on the second highest. Um, Sandy, who's the one who uploaded it, on the first alto, I think, and then Diane on the contralto part. Um, again, I feel it's really awkward to call a female part by the name of bass. It doesn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> so this recording lasts kind of long, so I think I'll just go, go ahead and catch it. So... Oh, okay. Here we go. Now, I've heard this before, so um, I can definitely imagine I have a couple friends that I have, cool friends that I like hanging around with. Um, the coolest girl in the world, Haley. She has a huge, huge, huge vocal range. And um, if you look at the other videos in the playlist, I basically explain how octave numbers work if you're not familiar with it. But she can basically go from... As, as last I heard, she can hit from anywhere from D3 all the way up to an E6. So I'm sure Haley would be able to perfectly cover that top soprano part. I think that would be Shelley's part. Um, I have a couple of other friends who are pretty musical, such as Michelle and Leslie and Jackie, who go to uh, basically a Catholic youth group thing that meets on Tuesdays. Um, 
it's, I prefer that way over church. Because <laughs> I hate those stupid wobbly sopranos in church. It's just like, ugh, like it destroys the whole service. Um, but yeah, I can definitely picture the th um, four of us, uh, as in like Haley, Jackie, Michelle, and another friend of mine, Leslie, who goes to those church group events. Um, Leslie's got a pretty deep voice, so Michelle is a little bit higher than Leslie, Jackie's a little higher than Michelle, and then obviously Haley can hit those high notes. So, um, yeah, I can definitely picture, like, four of my, four of these girls doing that together, but of course it may not even happen, who knows. But anyway, let's get on with it. Wow, siren. I don't think she can do a trill that low, so that's I think that's why she just swept up to that pitch. They've got good vibratos. Oh, I can tell she's trying to imitate those clarinet trills. Here comes that really high note that I know Haley would be able to hit. I can see that being Haley. And then I can see this being Leslie. Like that low part, because Leslie's got a deep voice. That would be Haley. Problem is, Haley's the only one out of these friends that has perfect pitch, so the other three are really, really gonna have to be coordinated. Ooh, nice vibrato. Oh, the tape slipped. Ooh, hot vibrato on that note. is literally the only quartet in the world that does it on YouTube. The only one. Oh, nice chord again. Ah, there goes Haley again. <laughs> or I can see Haley doing that part. It's technically Shelly, I think. jump that was that would that would have been Leslie in quotes and then Haley in quotes I think Ooh. 
the imaginary Haley again. Those two parts would be probably Haley and Jackie. Because Jackie's got a higher voice than Michelle, who has a higher voice than Leslie. These are not the names of the actual quartet members. I'm just imagining these friends doing it. Oh, Leslie's got a solo. Okay, that part is real barbershop. <laughs> It's not that I've never heard this piece ever before. I've heard it um, played by the Five Browns, who are a five-sibling piano ensemble. They're really, really good. That's the first time I've ever heard this piece. And then I heard this version. And then I heard the 1924 version with Gershwin himself on the piano. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Gershwin is one of Haley's favorite pieces. Or composers, excuse me. Gershwin is one of Haley's favorite composers. So I can definitely see this being a contender for one of Haley's favorite pieces. In fact, I think one of her favorite YouTube channels talks about it. One of Haley's favorite YouTube channels. Oh, Haley would hit that that top note. Oh, Leslie would start that part off. So yeah, it's, I mean, you can definitely see why it's simplified, because you need a million more voice parts to do the whole piece kind of vocally justice to fit the or orchestral, orchestral arrangement that was recorded. Um, but of course there are piano, I mean, Gershwin originally wrote it for two pianos, as, as I heard about it from a video by one of Haley's favorite YouTube channels. Um, I was actually trying to look for the original Gershwin recording when I stumbled across the um, David Bruce composer video, like how did Gershwin kind of change classical music. Um, and just for you, Haley, I subscribed to him too. So yeah, um, I wonder what the next episode's going to be, probably because I keep hearing from one of my absolute favorite singers in the world, um, 
this really hot, famous hot girl named Madeline Bailey. I think I'll react to one of her songs and tell you why she's so hot, even, even for me as a blind person, because a lot of people just care about looks, which annoys the heck out of me, because it's just like, hey, come on, we're blind. It's like, why should we care about just looks? There's more to a person than just looks. And, you know, I mean, even Ed Sheeran says so. Like, he says, you look perfect. Is that all you care about her? If that's all you care about her, I guarantee you the relationship is not going to work. Um, but anyway, you know, what, what basically what hot, what, what it means for someone to be hot, at least from my blind perspective, you know. But that won't be until another episode, so, um, I think I'll actually kind of, so to speak, put the barbershop in the, kind of in the storage tubs for a while and explore something different. Um, you know, probably Madeline or Denise, Denise Lee, one of my favorite opera singers in the world. Well, she's retired now, so she can't really sing from old age anymore because she's vocally frail, but, um, yeah, so if you haven't done so already, feel free to hit like and the subscribe button, and um, definitely make sure to um, check out the um, playlist that contains other episodes of the Blind Piper React series, and also so you could get the oppor opportunity to hear really cool music that you probably wouldn't ever hear in your life, so yeah, so have a great day. And join me for another episode of Blind Piper Reacts. Ciao. Didn't feel like doing that barbershop chord today.